the Insta360 Ace Pro records video at up to 8K resolution and a staggering 170 megabits per second bitrate. But how big are the resulting files and what memory card are you going to need in order to support that? Well, stay tuned and let's try to find out. So, what memory card is going to give you the best results with your Insta360 Ace Pro? That's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to look at specifications you should be looking for, brands that you might want to consider, and I'll also share some test results with some of the most popular memory cards out there. Now, as always, there's quite a bit to cover, so I'll place the chapters up here and on the video timeline, but before we get into it, very important to stress, I purchased my Ace Pro and all of the tested memory cards with my own money, and the opinions are entirely my own. If you enjoy this video, please remember to give us a like, and also consider subscribing to the channel for a lot more similar content. So, let's get on with it. Now, in order to get the best results out of your Ace Pro, there are a few specifications you want to be looking for, the first of which is the video write speed. Now, when you look at the specifications of a memory card, there are so many different specifications and numbers, it can be quite confusing, and in some cases even misleading. But fortunately, there is one key specification that helps us out here, and that is the V number, which is the video speed number. Now, currently, there are just five categories of video speed. There's V6, V10, V30, V60, and V90. Now, this number indicates the minimum sequential write speed that the card is guaranteed to maintain. And it's stated in megabytes per second. So, if you have a memory card with a V10 rating, that card is guaranteed to provide a sequential write speed of never less than 10 megabytes per second. So what speed do you need then for your Insta360 Ace Pro? Well, in order to determine that, you need to know its bitrate. Now, in the case of the Ace Pro, the maximum bitrate is 170 megabits per second, which it uses when it is recording at 8K resolution, 24 frames per second. But it also comes pretty close to that number in other modes, including 4K at 120 frames per second, or the free frame mode at 4K at 60 frames per second. Now, an important note here, the bitrate is stated in megabits per second with a small b, whereas the video speed, the V number that we talked about a moment ago, is measured in megabytes per second. Luckily, the conversion is pretty straightforward. If you recall, one byte is equal to eight bits, so converting from one to the other is simply a case of either dividing or multiplying by eight. So if we do the conversion for the Ace Pro, 170 megabits per second works out to just over 21 megabytes per second. So clearly a V10 card is not going to be sufficient. You would need to move up to at least the next level, which is a V30 card. Now you may be thinking that 21 megabytes per second is getting fairly close to that 30 megabyte per second rating. So why not just go with a V60 or a V90 card? There are some good reasons for that, and we'll talk about those later on. So for our testing then, we're going to be looking at V30 cards and seeing how they handle the highest demand modes of the Ace Pro. Another specification that you might want to look for in a memory card is the read speed. Now basically, this is how fast you're going to be able to get the data that's on the card onto your computer or whatever device you are using. Now, just like the write speed, the read speed is also measured in megabytes per second. Now, typically read speeds are a little bit higher than the write speed. And for the type of cards we've been discussing, V30 cards, you'll probably find most of them are in the 100 to almost 200 megabyte per second range. And of course, this can make a big difference in the amount of time you have to wait to transfer your files, 
particularly if you've been recording a lot of video. Now, there is an important point here, and that is in order to take full advantage of the read speed of your memory card, you need to use a reader which can fully support that speed. Now, my understanding is that Ace Pro has a transfer speed only of up to 80 megabytes per second, but that's something we'll be testing later on. So, what card capacity are you going to need for your Ace Pro? Well, of course, that depends on what mode you are shooting in. If we start out with the most extreme case, that is 8K 24 frames per second, where the bitrate is 170 megabits per second. Now, if we do the conversion, that works out to just under 1.3 gigabytes for each minute of recording. So recording at 8K, a 64 gigabyte card will give us around 50 minutes of recording time. A 128 gig card will give us about 100 minutes of recording time and so on. Although do keep in mind that once a card is formatted, the available space on that card is generally slightly less than what is written on the label. Now, if you are recording in the 4K 120 frames per second mode or the free frame 4K at 60 frames per second, the bitrate drops to around 160 megabits per second. So in that case, you will get slightly more recording time out of your memory card. And if you are recording in a standard 4K 30 frames per second mode, the bitrate will drop to just over 100 megabits per second, so obviously you will get considerably longer. Now, I'm not here to advocate for any particular brand of memory card, but when it comes to memory cards, this is one product you don't want to go cheap on. I highly recommend you go with a known and established memory card brand. These products are the result of extensive research, they are produced in optimized manufacturing environments, and these companies have stringent and externally accredited quality assurance system to give you a product that you can rely on. If you think of the consequences of going with some cheap off-brand, you could easily end up losing your entire vacation videos or your YouTube project videos, whatever the case may be. It's just not worth the risk. Of course, you can experience problems even with some of these known brands, but the probability is going to be much lower. And also, it's important where you buy your memory cards. There is a significant knockoff market for memory cards, and if you find a deal on eBay or Amazon Marketplace for a popular memory card which seems too good to be true, it is too good to be true. And that brings me to the cards that we're going to be testing today. I've selected five cards. I realize there may be more out there that could be included, but these just happen to be five very popular cards that are most familiar to me. So here is my list. They're presented in alphabetical order together with their read and write specs, as well as the current street price. First up, we have the Canvas Go Plus. Next up, the Lexar Silver Series, which has been my go-to card for some years now. Next up, something of a budget choice, the PNY Pro Elite. Then we have the Samsung Pro Plus. And finally, the SanDisk Extreme. So for the right test, the first thing I did was determine which are the most demanding modes on the Ace Pro. And as you saw previously, of course, this turned out to be the 8K mode, which runs at 170 megabits per second, but also the 4K 120 frames per second mode, or the free frame 4K at 60 frames per second. Both of these modes ran at close to 160 megabits per second. So I tested all three of these modes on all cards. I ran multiple 10 minute runs on all of the cards. And as far as my write tests are concerned, all cards performed equally. There were no issues at all on any of the cards and they all produced identically sized files for all tests. Here you can see the results of the 8K test 
As you can see, as I mentioned, all cards produced identical file sizes, confirming the 170 megabit per second bitrate. And here you can see the results from the 4K 120 and Freeframe 4K 60 tests. Here too you can see all file sizes are identical, confirming the bitrate at around about 160 megabits per second. So summing up our write test then, all cards basically performed equal, they all handled the toughest modes of the Ace Pro without any difficulty and all produced identical results. Okay, so let's take a look at the read test results. Now first off I have to say that all cards tested slightly slower than their claimed performance. In the case of the Kingston card, considerably lower, but I also should point out that in the case of the SanDisk, the test result was probably a limitation of my card reader more so than of the card itself. But even with that limitation, the SanDisk came out on top, getting to almost 170 megabytes per second, with the PNY being the slowest at under 100 megabytes per second. Now, all of these results were achieved by placing the card into a high-speed card reader. I use this particular one from Lexar, but if you typically prefer to just plug your camera into your computer and transfer the files that way, when I tested the Ace Pro, the best I got out of it was just over 80 megabytes per second, so you're going to be limited to that number. Now, even though all of our V30 memory cards performed flawlessly during our tests, one of the things you might be thinking is, well, why not just get a V60 or V90 card and that will guarantee me the best performance? Well, unfortunately, it's not quite that simple, and that's because the Ace Pro uses a certain bus type called UHS-1 in order to communicate with the memory card, whereas V60 or V90 cards use a different bus called UHS-2 or UHS-3. And while they are backwards compatible to UHS-1, there's really no benefit in using it. And in fact, if you check out the support pages of the Insta360 website, you'll see that Insta360 recommends that you use a UHS-1 card and not to use UHS-2 or 3 cards. So when it comes to the in-camera performance, all five cards basically performed identically. They were all able to handle anything that the Ace Pro could throw at them, all the way up to 8K resolution or 170 megabits per second. None of them had any issues and they all produced identical results. The only real difference we saw between the cards was in terms of their read performance, with the SanDisk coming out on top and the PNY being the slowest of the group, but do keep in mind that in order to leverage those speeds you do need to use a card reader that will support them. If you plan on transferring the files directly from your Ace Pro, you're not going to see that difference. So that wraps it up for another video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, got good information out of it, please remember to give us a like and also consider subscribing to the channel for a lot more similar content. If you have any questions, any comments, suggestions for future videos, please drop those into the comments section. Otherwise, thank you again for watching.